Hi and welcome back. So this video marks the 63 month point of my longevity experiment. Enough waffling of me, let's jump in and look at my subjective stats. Let's quickly take a look at the supplements I've been taking over the last three months. Hang on because I'm going to mention during this list one thing that I have added. So 1.5 grams of NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, one gram of trans resveratrol only on the days when I don't weight train, one gram, 1,000 milligrams of metformin, 1.5 grams of TMG, trimethylglycine, 5,000 international units of vitamin D3, 10,000 on a Monday and a Wednesday, 120 micrograms of vitamin K2, and that's the MK7 version, 250 milligrams of magnesium, that's the L3 and 8 version, 200 milligrams of high molecular weight hyaluronic acid, 2.4 grams of fisetin on the first, second and third of each month, 2.4 grams of quercetin on the first, second and third of each month. And there's a link in the description below explaining why I have this periodic uh, dosing protocol. Then we've got CERT6 activator, 400 milligrams a day, DIM, 600 milligrams a day, Glynac, glycine and NAC, 800 milligrams a day, and then five grams of creatine, and that's one month on and then two months off. I've added omega-3 fatty acids, 800 milligrams of EPA and 600 milligrams of DHA. Now, I take the majority of the supplements when I wake up. That's sometime between 6 and 6.30 in the morning. My DIM is split into three equal doses, 200, as I say, in the morning, 200 between 11 and 12 lunchtime, and then 200 as I climb into bed sometime between 9.30 and 10 o'clock. Um, metformin used to be 500 in the morning and 500 in the evening before I went to bed. In this, in this last three-month period, I've been taking the whole one gram or the 1,000 milligrams after my evening meal just to see if that can affect my blood sugar levels. I still take my resveratrol on the days I don't train. I train Monday, Wednesday and Friday. I don't train on Tuesday Thursday and Saturday. That's the days I take my resveratrol mixed into yoga. And I sometimes take it on a Sunday as well. So that's it for my supplement stack. Let's look at my diet and fasting protocol. First of all, my fasting 16-8 protocol. I've normally finished eating by 8 p.m. at night, although in most cases it's now 7 p.m. the night before. And then I don't eat until noon the next day. That's normally the 16 8 protocol. Now that I'm eating Oman one meal a day for three me three days of the week, I'm, easy, I'm finding it easy to push that to one, two, and sometimes three o'clock in the afternoon. Because on Oman days, I push it all the way till six. On the Oman days then, which is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I finish eating by seven or 8 p.m. the night before. And then I don't eat my evening meal until I've got back from walking the dog. And that's normally between 6, 6.30, something around there. If after I finished eating, my wife has got some snacks or she's got extra food left over, um, she'll give me that. So sometimes on the Oma day, my eating window is from like 6 until 8. Let's look at the diet. On the non Oma days, if I do have lunch at like 2 or 3 in the afternoon, it's sometimes coffee with cream, um, sometimes nuts, and occasionally a berry shake. For snacks during the day, especially on the Oma days, um, the snack, if you like, isn't actually a food. It's tea, green, it's green tea, it's coffee and sometimes water. And I'm recording this now late in the afternoon. I've got my water here. Um, I've finished all my coffee for the day. And then evening meal is always meat. Nine times out of ten, it's eggs, sometimes vegetables, not as many vegetables as I used to eat um, when I first got here or when I was back in the Middle East. So that's it for my diet and my fasting protocol. Moving on to the overall feeling section and specifically my energy levels. They're normally high and steady, although that said, over the last three months, they have been improving. Uh, I wouldn't say consistently, as in 10% every single week, but especially on my bike rides and my ruck run, my times are getting quicker and my speed is getting faster. So I'm going to stick myself now somewhere between improving consistently and remaining high and steady. So that's it for my overall feeling with regard to energy. So other elements of my overall feeling. First of all, we've got napping. Still no napping at all in the afternoons. Um, I can't I can't remember napping now probably for about three or four years, which is quite good. Uh, I did a video on improving your REM sleep and it says if you do need to nap, try to do it in the morning and try to keep the naps uh, as short as possible. I used to nap in the afternoon when I was on a poor diet. Um, 
and I would have that slump in the afternoon. I'd, as I say, I haven't napped for probably three or four years now. Next, we've got motivation and attitude. I'm probably going to change these to attitude and then motivation because I added attitude, I think, the last quarter. Um, we've just had three months where a large portion of that, the kids were off school. So motivation for me to get up at six o'clock in the morning has been a bit lower because we don't have to get up and take the kids to school. The dog's happy lying around. It doesn't need to be walked between six and 6.30, quarter seven. It's my attitude that's got me out of bed at six o'clock, regardless of whether the rest of the house is fast asleep. Um, because I don't need to walk the dog, take the kids and then go to the gym. What I was tending to do when the kids were off school is wake up, go for the bike ride, go for the ruck run or go to the gym, then come back, then walk the dog and then meet the family as they're waking up like 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. So my attitude and motivation, attitude has been high and consistent. My motivation may have waned, but my attitude told me to just get on and do it. Then we've got my gym performance. No issues with that whatsoever. Um, maintaining the same strength, sometimes probably doing one or two more reps per set, still doing uh, the normal set. So no big change regarding gym performance. I'm not trying to get any bigger. I'm just trying to maintain the strength levels that I've got, which are reflected in my grip strength. And we'll come on to that in the next section. Then we've got injuries. No injuries really to talk of. I had that niggle that I had a couple of times in my left elbow when I'm doing uh, bicep curls, all I tend to do then is just not go up to the higher weight, just stay down and probably do a few more reps in that particular set. Uh, and that twinge that I felt coming, that's now gone away. Sickness, I've not been sick at all over the last three months. People here have. It's uh, that weather change where we've now got the end of the rainy season. It's getting humid during the days. And then some days it's overcast and quite cold for the Philippines. So some people have had the sniffles, uh, flu type symptoms. I've had none of that whatsoever. So that's it for my overall feeling. That's it for my subjective stats. So let's look at the subjective stats for my longevity experiment. 63 month point. First of all, let's look at my weight. You can see there that the last three months at the end, which was April, I was 81.1 kilos, 178.8 pounds. I'm now 84.37, 186 pounds. That's up 3.2 kilograms, that's about seven pounds since the last check, but I'm down 7.3 kilos at 16.82 pounds since the start. Now, I'm not too bothered about losing or in gaining weight as long as it doesn't have a negative effect on either my percentage body fat or my muscle mass. Next thing we're going to look at is my BMI. You can see here that it was 27.7. Remember, I'm not a big fan of BMI because it measures all your weight as a one. It doesn't uh, differentiate between fat and muscle. That said, I'm down to 27.5, which for some people is good. For me, I'm not really that bothered. Then we've got percentage body fat. You can see it was 23.90. This time it is 19.50. So I've lost 4.4% of my percentage body fat since the last check, and I'm down 7% since the beginning. So that's good. Even though I put weight on, my percentage fat mass has dropped, which I'm very happy with. Next, let's look at my muscle mass. You can see here 34.4 was the last percentage for my muscle mass. This time it is 36.8. So I'm up 2.4% since the last check and up 3.3 since the start. So although I've put weight on, I've dropped my fat mass and I've upped my muscle, my muscle percentage, which I'm very happy with indeed. Moving on to my basal metabolic rate, it was 17.57. It's now 17.51, so that's down six since the start. Then we've got visceral fat. You can see here, nothing has changed since October, uh, sorry, July of uh, 2022. And I often worried that maybe when it was 13 in July 2022, it was hopefully dropping down 13.9, 13.8 on the way to 12. But I didn't know if it was actually starting in July 22 on 13.1, it was going up. Um, so April, it was 13 again and no change. This time it's gone down, thankfully, to 12. So that's down once since the last check and it's down three since the start. So well, again, although I put weight on, I'm happy that my body fat percentage has gone down and my visceral fat level has also gone down too because this is an important marker of metabolic syndrome and other things like that. Moving on to my waist, you can see here it was 34 inches. This time it's still 34. That said, I could have breathed in a little and got it down to 
33.5. I couldn't have got it down to 33. So a comfortable measurement of 34. I'm happy with that. Then we've got my sleep scores. Now you'll see here that I'm not now recording my monthly score for light, deep and REM because my ultra human ring and my Mi Band 8 do not give me monthly stats. The only thing they give me with regard to monthly stats is overall sleep. That said, if you are a subscribed member to the YouTube channel, you'll know that in the community tab, I post pretty much every morning what my sleep scores were for the night before. In fact, uh, one of those posts did get the comment about how good my REM sleep was, and that prompted the, the latest video I did on REM sleep. So my overall sleep, I'm looking for over seven hours, somewhere between seven and eight hours per night. You can see here that for the last quarter of May, I got seven hours and 19 as an average. In June, it was seven hours and 51 as an average. In July, seven hours and 38. So I'm very happy with that. Uh, as a kind of a, a rough rule, if you like, I'm looking to get deep and REM sleep over one hour per night. I'm doing that easily with my deep sleep. And if you, I say, if you subscribe, you'll see that in the community tab. And my REM sleep, most times is over one hour. My deep sleep sometimes also goes up to two hours per night. So that's it for my sleep scores. Moving on to my rest and heart rate. You can see here the scores from May of 20 to July of 2022. I'll scroll down now until you've got August 2022 until April of 2024. And then the last quarter, you can see here for my rest and heart rate. The average was 51 in May, in June it was 53, and in July it was 55. That's down considerably because I'm now getting all my stats from my Ultra Human Ring. So I'm not sure if the Mi Band 8 is more accurate or the Ultra Human Ring is more accurate. But the average for that quarter gives my resting heart rate at 53. Now if you look at the chart here, 53 for a 60 year old is now got me in for some reason, the athletic uh, group. So that's good. I'm happy with that with regard to rest in heart rate. Then we've got my grip strength. You can see here last April, it was 112.8 pounds for my left hand and 116.6 for my right hand. This time it's 110.8 for my left hand and 123.8 for my right hand. Um, a man between the age of 60 and 64, if he gets more than 105, they class him as strong. So 110 is more than 105 and 123 is certainly more than 105. So if it had another column, extra strong, maybe I might be in that, which would be good. Um, so I'm quite happy with grip strength because that is a proxy for longevity. You'll see some YouTubers who have a grip strength meter because it is a proxy for longevity um, and they actually train with it to try and get good grip strength. I, I think that's defeating the object. The object is that your normal daily activities will give you group, good grip strength. And when you do test it occasionally, which is what I do, it will tell you um, what your score is and how relevant that is to longevity as opposed to training for that one specific metric. I think they're uh, they're cheating a little bit there. Steps. My normal stepney day count, my normal daily step count, I'm looking at a target of 5,000 a day because I've done quite a few reviews now on step counts. You can look at the, the scores I got from February of 2023 to April of 24. And they say the sweet spot is somewhere between 3,000 and 6,000 steps per day. The more you get closer to 10,000 and beyond, the better. But um, with regard to longevity, 5,000 is somewhere in the middle. So for the last quarter, you can see here that my step count for May was 8,416. June, 7,506. And July, 7,237. So all above the 5,000. I wanted the average for the quarter, 7,000. 719. So that's well above the 5,000. So I'm very happy with that. That's it for my subjective stats. So I think all in all, pretty good. I'm happy that my muscle mass percentage has gone up. I'm happy that my body fat percentage has gone down. I'm not particularly bothered that my BMI has gone down either. I'm also not bothered that my um, body weight has gone up because I'm assuming that muscle mass increase is also body weight and increasing skeletal muscle is good for longevity. Let me know what you think in the comments below about my 63 month longevity experiment update.